So I was on, I was on, uh, I was like reading a bunch of articles about sentencing, like, oh, what time is the sentencing? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, jailhouse calls. Are there jailhouse calls with this? <laughs> what happened to jailhouse calls? So we're going to go over the jailhouse calls right now. They are very bad. She goes after the witnesses. She goes after um, Carrie Morrissey, who is the uh, special attorney. I think that's her like official title. The judge, the jury. We also found out that she also has new charges, not not new charges, but charges that were filed um, about half a year ago. And she might have a trial for that one. I don't know. It just seems like it might be a lot of things to, to happen. So I'm going to read this. This is the state's response uh, dated a couple days ago. State's response to defendant's sentencing memorandum and request for conditional discharge. What a word. Comes now the state of New Mexico by and through special prosecutors Carrie T. Morrissey and Jason J. Lewis, who submit the following response to the defendant's sentencing memorandum and conditional discharge. One, the state opposed the defendant's request for a conditional discharge. While it is true that Ms. Gutierrez is eligible for a conditional discharge, the state asserts that Ms. Gutierrez should not be granted a conditional discharge because upon her arrival in New Mexico, she swiftly committed a host of felonies and has another felony charge pending before Judge Ellington for intentionally hiding a firearm arm from security at a local bar to get firearm into the bar upon successfully circumventing the security at the bar she went to the restroom made a selfie video stating in quotations they checked my purse but they didn't check my butt cheeks wah wah <laughs> i was like gonna read that with a straight face <laughs> i want to know what the judge's face was when she read this okay <laughs> Oh boy. At the same time that she was speaking, she held up a nickel plated semi automatic pistol in front of the camera. There is additional evidence that has been previously been presented to the court that Ms. Gutierrez was in possession of cocaine while in New Mexico and while working at the firearms expert on the rust on the set of rust. Yet another felony. <laughs> Number two. The state also opposes a conditional discharge due to Ms. Gutierrez's complete and total, I don't know, and that's what I'll say. I was like, maybe she was hiding in her butt cheeks or, <laughs> listen, like when you go to the bar and they check you, I feel like they usually do one of these checks, right? So they'll pat you down here. They'll go here. Women who are wearing brawls, they'll do like this type of thing. And then the back, I think they just check like maybe like if you have like a belt on, they'll check your purse, but they ain't going to like shove your, their hands in your butt cheeks or any of the cracks or anything like that. Like, it's not that serious. They'll check like the legs, but usually when it comes to like other private parts, like they're not going to be like jamming their fingers up in there. Okay. So if she was hiding a gun in her butt cheeks or if she was hiding it, like, I don't know where her butt was. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess that's how she got through. Also, I don't know. How do you hide a gun in your butt cheeks? That sounds kind of dangerous. <laughs> But maybe she was being hyperbolic. I don't know. Maybe she hit it elsewhere or maybe they just did a bad job of checking. I don't know. It just sounds uh, a little bit hilarious. Number two, the state also opposes a conditional discharge due to Ms. Gutierrez's complete and total failure to accept responsibility for her actions as demonstrated by the summaries below of some of her calls since her incarceration on March 6, 2024. So all these calls happen within a month. Ms. Gutierrez continues to deny responsibility and blame others. She goes so far as to blame the set medic, the paramedics who attempted to save Ms. Hutchins, and even blames the child actor on set for picking up the gun. Moreover, there are references to Ms. Gutierrez being in possession of alcohol during the time the trial was taking place. Wait, what? And continuing to consume alcohol contrary to the release? Wait, what to the condition of her release while on pretrial release with her boyfriend? Who's her boyfriend? Wait, what's her? Maybe that's her boyfriend in the background, sitting in the suit, biting the fingernails. Stunningly, Ms. Gutierrez requested jail. Ms. <laughs> Stunningly, Ms. Gutierrez requested during jail calls that her legal team requests. Oh my God, this is so bad. That Ms. Hutchins' husband and son be contacted and asked to speak on her behalf at her sentencing. I don't know if she's just, I don't know. Like I kept attributing to like, oh, she's just young, immature, doesn't know any better, but she could just be straight up dumb. Like, I'm sorry. She could just be dumb. She continued to complain in her jail calls about the negative effects this incident has had on her life and her modeling career while never expressing genuine remorse at any time. She expressed a willingness to violate further court orders should she be subpoenaed for the Baldwin trial. She referred to the jurors as retards, idiots, and assholes and suggested that her mother could confront undersigned counsel in the restroom <laughs> because counsel uses the same restroom as the public. <laughs> 
<laughs> what is her mom gonna do is her mom just gonna go up to like morrissey and try to like one up on her or something like that like morrissey looks pretty fucking scary okay she looks scary on the screen i'm sure she's probably scary in person Finally, she requested that her employment history be misrepresented to undersigned counsel and the court so it would appear as though she was working full time prior to the trial. Now, if you guys missed it earlier, we listened to uh, a hearing that took place where Jason Bowles, her defense attorney, was like, oh, you know, Hannah Reed's been working full time. She takes care of her father who has leukemia um, and something else. And then the state responded by saying, well, you know, a week ago we asked for, oh, it was like uh, she was seeing uh, counseling or something like that. She was getting treatment, counseling, blah, blah, blah. And so the state responded and she was like, well, I requested for these, you know, these like job records. I requested the treatment, this, the counseling stuff. I still haven't gotten it yet. So I don't know if maybe Hannah told Jason Bowles that she was doing all this, but really she was just bullshitting. And then she didn't expect for them to have to show proof. I don't know. That doesn't really seem to make sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> surprisingly ms gutierrez doesn't seem to mind being in jail and at times appears to genuinely enjoy it number three the state further requests that this court des designate ms gutierrez offense a serious violent offense pursuant to da 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 in quotations the amount of deductions a prisoner may earn depends on whether the crime for which the prisoner is serving his or her sentence is a serious violent offense or a non-violent offense a prisoner serving a sentence for a serious violent offense may only receive up to four days per month of deductions whereas a prisoner serving a sentence for a non-violent offense may receive up to 30 days per month of deductions 17 crimes enumerated in 14 statutory provisions are by definition set serious violent offenses we refer to these crimes as per say serious violent offenses another 20 crimes enumerated in 15 statutory provisions or serious violent offenses if the district court finds that the nature of the offense and the resulting harm of the crime under a given set of facts warrants the designation uh, here's a citation right here explaining that a district court must find that the crime was committed in physically violent matter matter either with an intent to do serious harm or with recklessness in the face of knowledge that one's acts are reasonably likely to result in serious harm emphasis added internal quotation marks and citation omitted we refer to these crimes as discretionary serious violent offenses all remaining crimes those not designated serious violent offenses are by definition non-violent offenses the state is requesting the serious violent offense designation due to the extreme recklessness with which Ms. Gutierrez behaved while working as the armor on the set of Russ. It is clear from the digital evidence presented at Ms. Gutierrez's trial that she brought live rounds on set by failing to properly inspect the dummy rounds she provided to the set. Moreover, she failed to check the dummy rounds after providing them to the set and as a result loaded one into the gun holster being worn by Alec Baldwin and the gun belt being worn by Jensen Ackles. She did all of this before she loaded a live round into a prop gun, told the first assistant director that a gun was cold, permitted to be handed off to an actor to manipulate for a scene. Every time a gun was loaded with a dummy round, it was a game of Russian roulette. There is ample evidence that Ms. Gutierrez was using alcohol, marijuana, and cocaine in the evenings during the filming of Rust and may have reported to set to work while under the influence of these substances. It should be noted that on September 3rd, 2021, Mr. Gutierrez... Uh, Mr. Uh, Ms. Gutierrez, Ms. Gutierrez's stepfather, Thel Reed, texted her, quotations, did you find the 45 cold ammo, question mark, and then again texted, keep looking. This text is from Ms. Gutierrez's stepfather was not used during trial because neither Ms. Gutierrez nor her stepfather testified. This message is a clear indication that Ms. Gutierrez was attempting to obtain a 45 caliber ammunition in the weeks leading up to her work on the set of Russ. Ms. Gutierrez was aware that the guns being used by the actors on the set were real guns and also knew that dummy rounds looked exactly like live rounds. She certainly understood that she was responsible for checking the dummy rounds to ensure that they were inert and understood that people could be killed if a live round was placed into a prop gun. I'm surprised Hannah didn't blame Hutchins for being in the way of the bullet she loaded. If only her father was firing blanks. It's her stepfather. 
Um, number five, the state requests that Ms. Gutierrez be sentenced to 18 months in the Department of Corrections with a designation of serious violent offender due to her recklessness in the face of knowledge that her acts are reasonably likely to result in serious harm. A standard set forth under New Mexico law. Should the court determine that a suspended slash deferred sentence is appropriate, the state requests the court exercise its full probationary discretion and sentence Ms. Gutierrez to five years of probation as a condition of any suspended slash deferred sentence. So here are the summaries of jailhouse calls. How many pages we got? Oh God, this is like more than, <laughs> it's like more than half. All right, summary of jailhouse calls. Um, is there a way for me to indicate what the date would be on these? I don't have the dates. I was trying to figure out based on like the file name. However, uh, we all know that she was taken away in beginning of March. So these jailhouse calls happen like about a month ago and afterwards. Hannah says the other girls in jail were saying that I can't believe they threw your pretty little white ass in here for nothing. Hannah says like, yeah, girl, for real. She says that so far she's built for jail and likes tap water. She likes hard beds and the cat food isn't too bad every day. The male says that when Hannah was taken away, that mom said, this is some bullshit. Hannah laughs loudly. He tells her what mom did. And Hannah says that she was glad her mom stood up and said something. Hannah laughs. Oh, so after Hannah was taken away, um, the courtroom was muted. And then someone in my chat was like, oh, Hannah's mom said something. And I was like, oh, I missed it. And we couldn't hear it. So now we know that the mom stood up and said, this is bullshit. Hmm. Hannah laughs about all of this. The male says he's, has, he's been to jail before. She says she didn't think she would like it, but now she does. Oh, great. Now you have 18 months of it. Have fun. Have fun. Well, I guess prison is going to be a lot different than jail. Here's another phone call. Hannah says that she can't believe the judge put her in jail. Hannah talks about the jury and how they only took two fucking hours and how she got the books thrown at her. She says that everyone lied on the stand except for two or three experts. She talks about the witnesses and how they all lied. She says that she didn't need to be shaking the dummies all the time. And that's what the judge was referring to during the sentencing. She complains about what happened on set and says people are still going to die on set. She complains about Gabby Pickle. She complains about the jury and how people who got immunity and had pending lawsuits. Oh, yeah, yeah. She complains about what happened on the set and says people are still going to die on set. There are ways to prevent people from dying, and that's what your job entailed, Hannah. Hello. Hello, Kylie. How are you doing today? How's it going? She says she wishes TMZ would shut up and that literally she is fine. She complains about the Washington Post and how if they talk to any worker in there, they would all say she is happy and bubbly another call she talks about being a felon and how it's going to work with and how it's going to work with all of his guns and how she isn't sure how it will work what the fuck is that sentence she talks about being a felon and how it's going to work with all of his guns and how she isn't sure how it will work i'm confused she says that he can put them in a safe and he can tell them that she doesn't know the combo Oh, okay. So I think this is her and her boyfriend. So if Hannah becomes a felon, how is it going to work with her boyfriend having possession of guns? And I guess maybe this is the boyfriend said that, oh, you know, I could just put it in a safe and say you don't have access to the combination. Okay. I'm assuming that's a conversation with her boyfriend, maybe. Uh, different phone call. She talks about how she is wrongly incarcerated. After Hannah was taken to custody... After Hannah was taken to custody, Hayden, the other party to the call, goes to her hotel room to clean up. And Sean says, where did this bottle of Crown Royale come from? Hayden claims it and says Sean wasn't thrilled. Here's another call. Hannah talks about playing games with the other inmates. Hannah says she is fine in there. Hannah talks about suing various media outlets. Hannah goes back to TMZ and how she's built for jail. Hannah says that if she's subpoenaed by Baldwin's trial, she would not show up. Mom says that she was held in jail for three weeks for contempt. Oh my God, wait, what? <laughs> they locked up her mom for three weeks for that? Wait, what? Three weeks? I'm actually really surprised it was three weeks. Hannah complains that she shouldn't be subpoenaed if Baldwin didn't show up for... Wait, hold on a second. Why is this sentence like mixed up like this? Hannah says if she is subpoenaed to Baldwin's trial, she would not show up. Mom says that she was held in jail for three weeks for contempt. Hannah complains that she shouldn't be subpoenaed if Baldwin didn't show up for her. Another call. The judge giving her time for no reason. The judge isn't fair and they are going to Supreme Court. Another call. 
Hannah doesn't understand why the judge locked her up when she was on terms of release. Hannah says she was trying to get Carmela, Jason Bull's legal, to talk to the family of Helena about coming to sentencing to speak on her behalf. I don't know if she's just... Maybe she's just like a really clueless person. Here's another phone call. Hannah talks about the friend she's making and how she is having fun. She says she doesn't want to go to prison for 13 months, but you know, it is what it is. Hannah saying she's having more fun in jail than he, the other party to the call, did. Another phone call. Hannah says jail isn't like summer camp, but it is kind of like summer camp. Another call. Hannah says that everything is going to get reviewed and she feels like people were paid off to look the other way. Hannah goes into some sort of conspiracy theory about how she was used as a pawn. Hannah says it's not too bad in jail. Now the call. Hannah complains about what was allowed at trial. She wasn't allowed. Which, wait, sorry. What was allowed at trial, what wasn't allowed. Hannah says the judge is terrible. And Carrie got together with the judge and they were against her. Hannah complains about how fast the jury deliberated. Hannah says that, wait, okay. So Rain made this really important, um, she brought this up. She was saying how Hannah was complaining about how the jury took two hours to deliberate, blah, 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 blah. But then... But then how long did it take for Hannah to check those guns, you know, for like the live ammunition? How long did it take for her to check the dummies and stuff like that? <laughs> um, Hannah says that everyone that testified was giving immunity, had a lawsuit pending or was part of the problem. Yes, I believe they were part of the problem. But were they like the problem that Hannah was? No, Hannah was the problem. She calls the jury retarded. When they say a jury of your peers, they mean fucking retards. That's what Hannah says. Another call. Hannah, wait, hold on a second. Isn't she technically calling herself a fucking retard then? Because she says a jury of your peers. That would mean to reflect what, who she is. I, I don't know. I'm just lying. Um, Hannah calls Carrie a bitch and she's doing it out of spite. Hannah thinks the judge is getting paid off and thinks she deserves credit for being respectful. She's mad because she isn't going to get bail. <laughs> Hi, Taxi. How are you doing? Wait, taxi, I thought you were heading out. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> how's it going um hannah calls carrie a bitch and she's doing it out of spite hannah thinks the judge is getting paid off and thinks she deserves credit for being respectful she's mad because she isn't going to get bail oh, i read that already um another call she says there's a lot of nice things about jail and that is a forced break from life. She says that she paid a guy named Roger $3,000 to be her PR person. She said that Jason Bowles needs to talk to Roger to get everything out. Hannah and her mother joke about her mom getting thrown out of court and that judge is a menace. Hannah thanks her mom for the outburst. Hannah was thinking that mom is going to be behind her getting booked into jail. Here's another call. Hannah says the judge was on a power trip. Mom wants to picket the court. Hannah wants to pull in the governor and fuck this bitch up. It's hard to know who or what she's referring to as the bitch. Here's another call. She seems happy and is talking about cutting her friend's hair. Hannah's wishing that they had hula hoops in jail. Mom recommends writing a book about this whole thing before somebody else does. <laughs> Trying to get that bag. Here's another call. Hannah says that she already has been punished for this. Carmela, Bowles paralegal, says that she knows Hannah is sorry. Carmela says Carrie's lying about everything. Oh, no. Is it paralegal? No. They blame the child on set for being dangerous on set? They blame the child on set? I'm sorry. Who was the adult on the set? How old was Hannah again? I know she's like in her early 20s, but she was considered an adult. Why are you blaming the child? They blame the child on the set for being dangerous on set. Hannah talks about kids getting the gun that was just laying around on the ground. Well, first of all, why was the gun just laying around on the ground? Carmela tells Hannah, I don't trust Carrie to not be recording these calls. I don't trust that bitch. Wait, I'm so confused. Why would Carmela not think that the calls are recorded? Does she, is she just trying to fuck with Hannah? What is going on here? Hannah says if she has to stay in jail longer, she is going down for prison. Hannah says there is more to do in prison and talks about her going to Springer where she could ride horses. Here's another call. They talk about using her father's leukemia mm, to keep her out of prison. They want to say that her and her mom are the only people who can help her dad. Hannah talks about, oh, this is why, this is why Carrie Morrissey was like so disappointed in her. Hannah talks about her publicist and how it is time to make some statements from him. Here's another call. They talk about how it might work for Hannah if Hannah says that she is a sole caretaker for her father. Hannah says jail isn't too bad and some parts of it are just fine. I mean, I'm sorry, just because you're a sole caretaker of someone doesn't mean that you're just going to get out of prison. 
Hello? Oh, boy. And then also, remember, Mr. Bowles, Hannah's attorney, went up there, was just like, you know, like, sometimes if you were to screen through someone's phone calls, yeah, I mean, they're not going to be perfect. They're going to say some things. This is not just saying some things. It's like, there's a lot of shit in here. There's a lot of stuff in here. Another phone call. They talk about Hannah can do that time standing in her head. Hannah talks about her statement to the judge. Mom talks about saying something to the judge. Carmela apparently told her that she can stay whatever she wants. Oh, she can say whatever she wants at sentencing. And the worst that can happen is spending a couple days in jail. Why did the mom speak? Did they not allow the mom to speak or something during sentencing? Hannah asked Carmela to reach out to Helena's husband and son to support her at sentencing. Maybe they need to release his jailhouse calls. Hannah says jail is a forced vacation. She's doing fine. If she has to spend more time in jail, it will be okay. Here's another call. Hannah says the jury didn't look at the evidence and are assholes. Actually, hold on. Are these separate calls? I don't know if she would. Is she allowed to have this many calls? Or did they take like several calls and then broke it down to different file sizes? (laughs) Maybe that's what they did. Hannah says the jury didn't look at the evidence and are assholes. Hannah says the people that testified against her wanted to talk shit and get railroaded. Carrie lied in her closing statement. Hannah wants to go after the people for libel. Hannah's mad that the whole thing got pinned on her. Hannah says the jail is good character development. Hannah wants them to put Alec Baldwin in jail also. Hannah asked mom to tell the judge about Thel's leukemia diagnosis and how she takes care of him when mom isn't there. Hannah tells her mom what to say about how she takes care of Thel. Hannah says the jury is so fucking stupid and they couldn't tell what was happening. She calls the jury fucking idiots. Hannah says she doesn't feel like she deserves to be there and the jail guards agree with her. Hannah thinks the judge got paid off. They talk about the call being recorded and how they need to talk about people by their names instead of bitch. So they do know that calls were recorded. (laughs) They complain about the time the jury took to deliberate and how they didn't look at the evidence. They talk about how she shouldn't be a felon and maybe they can get it knocked down to a misdemeanor. Hannah wants to bother the governor for the rest of her life so she can be pardoned. Hannah doesn't feel she should be a felon because she has never been arrested. Hannah says the judge wanted to lock her up. Hannah and her mom talk about how the system failed her. Hannah's having a movie night in jail watching Frozen. Hannah's boyfriend say that he is trying to quit smoking weed. Hannah says that she won't have anyone to smoke with, smoke weed with, and that she's going to smoke weed when she gets out. Hannah's mother say that Hannah should fight the biggest girl of the bunch that is causing problems. <laughs> oh man, great influences, great influences. Mom says she can't promise she'll be calm and cool with sentencing. Mom says she's going, oh, you know what? I wonder if Carrie Morrissey showed this to the judge um, and was like, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't have the mom at the sentencing. Just don't let her be there. Mom says she can't promise she'll be calm and cool with sentencing. Mom says she's going to go in disguise if they don't let her in. Well, do we see the mom? I don't think we did. Mom says it's lucky that all she did at the verdict was yell. Hannah says she got moved to 300 and it's fucking lit in here now. Hannah complains about the jail guards. Hannah was accused of passing notes to some male inmate and sparked some sort of investigation. Hannah says she has Regina as her roommate and it is fun as fuck, not bad at all. Hannah says she had a good day and fun with another inmate. Hannah says it is crazy good vibes today and everyone is having fun because they got their commissary. Hannah talks about some medication she got that made her loopy. She talks about working out. Hannah says she likes a new medication because it makes her feel high. Hannah complains about the jury instructions and Hannah doesn't understand why she is in there. Hannah says that this whole thing has been a character attack on her. Hannah complains that she has gone. Hannah complains that she has all the fame of a public figure, but none of the benefits. Oh my God, this is so horrible. Hannah says this is all she was going to be known for. Mom asked whether or not Helena's friends and family are going to write letters for her. Um, they didn't. Why would they? Hannah says she's nice and safe in jail. Hannah says that they are referring to law enforcement and prosecution don't even have all her supplies. So how could they pin it on her and that it is reasonable doubt enough? Oh, see, I don't know. She probably knows it was her fault, but maybe she thought they planned enough reasonable doubt for the jury to not convict. Mm. They talked about how much Hannah's life. They talk about how much of Hannah's life they could take up and that it is messing up her modeling career. I didn't even know she had a modeling career. I know it looked like she did like some amateur modeling, like when she was like way younger um, and thinner. But did she take up modeling again afterwards? <laughs> Hannah's singing in jail. <laughs> let me go. Let me go. 
Hannah thinks the producer should be in jail. They complain, they complain about Dave Holtz and how he fucked Hannah to save his own ass. Possibly. She's so gross. I mean, look at the mom. When you have a parent like this that just enables your shitty behavior. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. Maybe she didn't have a, she didn't stand a chance. Hannah is dismissive of a judge talking about someone dying as a result of her actions. Mm. Hannah talks about how she's in good spirits. Hannah says she's really fine in jail and some days she really likes it here. Hannah says the prosecution bored the juror for nine days. And when the defense put their case, the jury was bored. They think the jury must have been tampered with. They feel let down by the FBI. Hannah says if the whole thing wasn't so comical, she would be upset. Mom yells that Hannah didn't cause Helena's death and Hannah agrees. Oh, God. Hannah and her boyfriend talk about Hannah drinking and how she is mean to him when she drinks. Yikes. Based on the time of their relationship, she had have to have violate her conditions because there's another call where they talk about being their six-month anniversary. So she's also an angry drunk? Mega yikes. Hannah says she deserves a new trial and that this is bullshit. Hannah talks about her job at Mattress World and how she doesn't want her job back, but perhaps she does because she would need a job. Hannah wants to go on unemployment and she thinks that losing her job due to incarceration is the best way to get on unemployment. <laughs> let me get that money and this is she should be signed there's like this is so like this guys i'm telling you this is crazy this is wild this is so bad i they like barely even glazed it okay when they talked about this during sentencing hannah says she should have signed a plea and that she and then just go on the news and denied it wait hannah says she should have signed the plea oh and then gone on the news and denied it so the uh special attorney uh carrie morrissey did offer hannah a plea for a lesser um for like a lesser sentencing and hannah said no i'm going to court i didn't do it so now she's like oh i should have just taken the plea but then just go on the news and say that it wasn't me <laughs> hannah says she's looking at 13 months which is ridiculous over what happened yeah She's like, I feel bad. Like, I don't know. When she talks about the victims, Joel, Helena, and during her sentencing, like, that was just all performative. Just completely performative. Especially, like, with all the shit that we're hearing from the jailhouse calls. Yikes. Because I, I thought, like, her demeanor was off, you know, when she was um, during the police body cam, when they interrogated her the first time, interrogated her a second time, and then kind of, like, how her demeanor was when she was, like, sitting there in the courtroom. But I was like, yeah, you know, maybe this is just how she is. But no, she seems like a piece of shit. Like, honestly, just like a piece of shit. Hannah thinks the paramedic should be in jail for intubating her wrong. Hannah says, wait, so what's her logic here? So she thinks the paramedic should be in jail for intubating Helena incorrectly. Like they didn't do their job correctly. Why would not, why would that not apply to her? I'm so confused. Courtney, Cl yeah, Courtney Clenny is also a bad one too. And the parents in that one. Yep. That's also another bad one. Uh, I mean, we got what Courtney Clenny, we got Hannah Reed, we got Sarah Boone. Who are the other entitled flux? Hannah says mom can also give Carrie a two or three of her pay stubs to shut that bitch up. Hannah tells mom to get the ones where she has 30 to 40 hours so it shows that she has a full-time job and not the ones that show less. <laughs> oh, the pay stubs. Oh my God. So she's trying to like lie on her pay stubs, I guess. Or she has pay stubs that shows her that like working full-time, but maybe she's not completely full-time all the time. <laughs> And I can't believe how many people are trying to ruin her. I know, Hannah, you're just doing this for yourself. I'm sorry. This is all you. This is all you're doing. Hannah says everyone thinks it's crazy. She got locked up with her history. Hannah says she shouldn't be in jail because she has no priors. Hannah complains that they literally put her in there with murderers. Hannah say that people have accents and people die. It's an unfortunate part of life, but it doesn't mean she should be in jail. She says the medic on the, re on the set of Russ is a dumb bitch and should have been prepared. They talk about the paramedics taking too long and she would still be here today if they have done it right and not into be Oh my God. So she's literally just pointing the finger at anyone, everyone but her. She calls the paramedics fucking idiots, fucking retards. Mom says, how is that on you? <laughs> oh, what does the mom look like? Mom wonders if Carrie's going to be at sentencing. Uh, yeah, no shit. She's a special prosecutor. Mom says she don't want to see me. Mom says she don't need that bitch there. Hannah tells her that they all use the same bathroom as the public and chuckles. Oh, my God. 
apparently um they her family made a gofundme for her they made her a fucking gofundme after the verdict um but gofundme they shut that shit down all right that shit is gone they shut it down i wonder what happens though when you do make a gofundme for someone and it gets shut down so as you're making a gofundme are you slowly getting the money or does it all get collected at once does anyone know how gofundme does it because i wonder if like that gofundme was being funded and they did get some money or they just end up getting like nothing <laughs> oh man all right well there we go that's that's a piece of shit for you i mean i for sure think those jailhouse calls might be released to the media i'll definitely keep an eye out for it uh these are summaries of the jailhouse calls so maybe the summaries are disingenuous and just make her look bad nah, i feel like the jailhouse calls are gonna be so bad uh if they're ever released 